Welcome friends, this is Tim Daniels. I am just delighted to be back with you uh, on this beautiful day for this time that we call our moment with the master. Have you ever known someone who, whom God has placed in a great position and God has given them great potential, but they fail to walk in God's purpose for their lives. And in fact, they, they totally ruin the great opportunity that God has given them. Well, that, that describes a, a man in the Old Testament by the name of Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel and God had taken him from an insignificant tribe. Nobody gave Saul a second thought, but God lifted him up and God placed him as the king of the greatest nation in the world. But Saul lost it all. It is amazing that sometimes the grace of God will put us in great positions. And what happens is that God's grace will put you there, but it takes character for you to stay there. And the reason for Saul's downfall is the spirit of comparing. I want to read for you from 1 Samuel 18, and we will begin with verse 5. And let's just take some thoughts about that. The Bible said, whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officials as well. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with cheerful, joyful songs and with timbrels and lars. And they danced, they sang as they danced. Saul has slain his thousand, but David his ten thousand. Saul was very angry at this refrain. It displeased him greatly. Here are some thoughts on what happens when we give in to this desire to compare. Number one, com <clears throat> comparing steals contentment. Comparing steals contentment. In this study, Saul was the king. David worked for him. But Saul was so insecure and so jealous and constantly comparing his success to David's success that he became very unhappy. In fact, the Bible said in verse eight, Saul was very angry. Also, it says in verse 12, Saul was afraid. Saul was very discontent in a, in a, in a season of discontentment because he was constantly comparing his success to David's success. Friends, when we compare ourselves to others, we will always be miserable. Always be miserable. Because whatever your situation is, whatever you have, somebody's going to have more. Whatever successes you, you have in life, somebody will be even more successful. However much money you have, somebody's going to have more money. However good you think you look, somebody's going to look better and people are going to say so. And if you're constantly comparing yourself, you will never, ever be happy. So comparing steals contentment. The second thing is comparing sparks competition. Comparing sparks competition. When you're constantly comparing yourself to someone else, you see yourself in a constant state of comp competition. If he buys an expensive car, I'm going to get more expensive car. If she gets a house that is 3,000 square feet, I want one that's more than 3,000 square feet. If he has this degree, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the same degree or a better degree. Or, so you're in constant competition. Who has the most money? Who has the biggest house? Who has the best career? It sparks competition. The second thing, the third thing about uh, comparing is 
Comparing suppresses your confidence. You know, during this period of time where Saul was comparing himself to David. Now, Saul was a successful warrior himself. He had a lot of successes that he could have enjoyed. But because he was constantly looking at David, who was younger, and comparing himself to David, he lost his confidence. He was, he had low self-esteem. He was very discouraged. He felt like he was inadequate, all because he was constantly comparing himself to others. Friend, if you constantly compare yourself to other people, you will have lower self-esteem. You will be insecure. You will feel sometimes less than valuable. You may even feel worthless. That's what comparing does. And then lastly, comparing spurs conflict. Comparing spurs conflict. Because Saul was so jealous of David, it led to bitterness, it led to resentment, and ultimately, Saul tried to kill David. And by the way, David married Saul's daughter. David was his son-in-law, but he was so jealous, so insecure, Saul actually spent over 10 years following and tracking David down in order to kill him. But what Saul didn't realize, David was not his problem. Insecurity was. And even if he had killed David, Saul would have had a problem because that would have been another David and he would forever be insecure. Friend, I am going through this because we live in a world where there's a constant need to measure ourselves against other people. Listen, you are unique. You are valuable. You are a beautiful creation of God. Just do you. Nobody can be you but you. Nobody can do you like you can. Be who you are. Hold your head up. Be proud of who you are. And then not only will you be more joyful, will you be more self, uh, self-confident, will you be more secure, but you can enjoy the successes of other people. You can celebrate the victories and, the, and all the accomplishments of others. Right now, I just believe God is calling me to pray for someone who's watching this video, Facebook or YouTube, and you are struggling with insecurity, low self-esteem, because you've been taught to compare yourself to other people. You know, the first murder that happened in the Bible where Cain murdered, killed his brother, Abel, it was because he compared his sacrifice, his worship to his brother's worship. Comparing can be devastating. And, 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 and all of us, let's be honest, all of us are susceptible to that because we are creatures of the flesh. So I, I want to pray right now for somebody, somebody you are struggling with deep insecurity because you feel like you don't measure up. And, and, and pray with me right now. Pray with me right now. Father in heaven, Father, right now, we come to you knowing that we are not perfect. We, we were shaped and molded in an environment of brokenness. And Father, right now, we, we struggle trying to measure up to the world's standards, the world's standard of success, of beauty, what we need to look like and have to be accepted. And some of us came up in that dysfunctionality in our families, and we've had to struggle with feeling worthless in our adult lives. So Father, right now, I'm praying with somebody, and you know who they are, who's struggling with insecurity. Right now, Father, we ask your Holy Spirit will speak to that spirit and let them know that they are wonderfully and joyfully made 
in the image of God. Help all of us to realize that we are uniquely created for your purpose. Help us to know that you have created us as a work of art, priceless in the sight of God. Help us not to worry about what other people think, what other people say, not measure ourselves based on the virtual world, what's on Facebook or what's on TikTok or, 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 or what we see in the magazines and, and, and not measure our success or our beauty or our looks by the man by man standard. Help us to measure ourselves, Father, by your standard and help us to be truly beautiful on the inside, kind, loving, compassion, compassionate, caring, unselfish. That's the beauty of a God. And you've placed that in us. So help somebody to hold their head up and their arms outstretched, accepting what you have placed within us. In Jesus' name, amen.